Good morning, and happy Mother's Day. I'd like to ask a question as we begin this morning. Who is the greatest influence in your life? A poll asked that question to more than 4,000 adults, and according to the poll, the person with the greatest influence in a per is a, was a person's mother. 42% of men and 53% of women said that mother was the most influential person in their lives. And this morning, we want to take a look at a mother of great faith, the mother of Moses. She trusted the Lord in a most difficult situation. Before we look into God's word, let's engage the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, give honor to mothers. It's just a special role that you have ordained in this, in this world. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity to engage you in worship. Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit would lead us, that we would truly hear from you through your word, and that, Lord, as we seek to engage you, that you would hear our praise, that you would hear our prayer. And so, Father, we just commit this time to you for your glory, for your praise, and it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So we want to look at a mother of great faith, the mother of Moses. She trusted the Lord. The family of Jacob moved to Egypt because of the terrible drought. We want to take a little bit of a background look at the situation. In that part of the world, there was a drought going on. And before that, Joseph was sold into slavery in Egypt by his jealous brothers. Joseph prospered in his captivity. And because God empowered him, he interpreted Pharaoh's dream of seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. As a result, Pharaoh promoted Joseph to essentially prime minister of the nation and made sure that his people were treated well. So God used Joseph to save the future nature, nation of Israel. But many years after Joseph died, Exodus chapter 1 and verse 8 records that there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Egypt's policy toward the Israelites changed. The Jews went from being favored guests in the land to being slaves. The number of Jews had increased to the point that Pharaoh considered them as a threat. He ordered the Jewish, the Hebrew midwives, to kill all the newborn baby boys in an attempt to control the Jewish population. However, the midwives feared God and refused to murder the infants. And when Pharaoh saw that his order was not being carried out, he commanded the Jewish parents to throw all their baby boys into the river. It's those events from Joseph being sold into slavery all the way to Israel becoming slaves and a great nation being captive to Pharaoh in Egypt. Those events set the stage for the unusual circumstances that placed Moses in a boat made of bulrushes. Let's, let's look at the faith of Moses' mother when she placed the little boat in the water. First of all, look at the faith in the past. Exodus chapter 2 is where we want to be. If you want to turn there in your Bibles, have them open there in Exodus, Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. And a man of the house of Levi went and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. And so the woman conceived and bore a son. 
And when she saw that he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. Numbers chapter 26 and verse 59 tells us the actual names of Moses' parents. The name of Amram's wife was Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, who was born to Levi in Egypt. And to Amram, she bore Aaron and Moses and their sister Miriam. The tribe of Levi was the tribe from which the priests and the Levites came. They were the religious leaders and priests of Israel. And Moses' mother was a woman of faith, being raised in a home that honored the Lord. She would have been instructed from a child in the ways of God and raised to live and honor God. The need for faithful parents cannot ever be overestimated. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 4 says, And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. Those two words there, uh, bring them up and admonition, bring them up, that phrase actually comes from one Greek word, uh, pedeia, which means to train and to teach children about God by both example and by instruction. It involves discipline, correction, and chastening, teaching right from wrong, what every parent should be concerned about. Here it's given as a res primary responsibility of the father to train up a child. And then it says admonition. Admonition is the Greek word nuthesia, which means to get the child's attention. Get its attention, if necessary, through a rebuke or through a warning. Fathers are instructed there not to provoke their children to wrath by giving unreasonable things to do, by using needless severity, or correcting them in anger. So we're given a tone that we're called as parents to use in training children. Particularly the fathers will have that disciplinary responsibility and the mothers are the primary nurturers, the ones who are primarily caring for and, and, and raising up the children. The influence of parents on their children is important. If you're a parent, you are an example and how you live your life and how you react to life's problems will establish patterns in their lives. Jochebed was aware of Pharaoh's order that called for the death of her son. You can imagine how she felt knowing that her boy would have to be put to death. That mother's love, that nurturing love for Moses was that issue when receiving the king's command. She needed to essentially kill her child by throwing him into the Nile. So look at the, the faith in the, in the past, but then again, look at the faith in the present. In verses 3 through 9 of Exodus chapter 2. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, daubed it with asphalt and pitch, put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. And her maidens walked along the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the reeds, she sent her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child. And behold, the child wept. So she had compassion on him and said, this is one of the Hebrew children. And then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and call a nurse for you from the Hebrew woman? 
that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. And then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. As the baby grew, it became hard to conceal. It can be difficult for a mother when she's trying to keep a baby quiet and the child just does not cooperate. Jochebed had one chance to save her child's life. If she kept the baby with her, it would have been discovered and killed. So she devised a plan to hide him in a little boat of bulrushes. Bulrushes were stalks of a papyrus plant that grew along the Nile. The Bible does not tell us this, but we can get the impression from reading this passage that Jochebed wanted the princess to find her son. Certainly, Jochebed prayed to God for help and some way to save her son. And God heard and granted her prayer. Only God in his providence could work it out that Moses' own mother would be able to raise him as a child belonging now to the princess of Egypt. And not only did she get to raise her son, but she was paid a salary to do so. She was able to continue nursing him and giving him a mother's love. She was able to continue daily contact with him. A mother is the one that we can depend on to always want what is best for us. A mother is the one who listens to our hurts and feels the pain with us. She knows how to make us feel better. A mother is one we can always count on when everyone else has turned against us. Mother's Day can be a stressful time for women who have no children, for women and mothers who have lost a child. It can be a time of great pain when a mother's children don't honor her or even remember her on Mother's Day. A mother's heart is broken when her children live in sin and turn their backs on God. Every mother wants the best for each of her children and is grieved when a child rebels and refuses to do what's right. Throughout God's word, women who function in the role of mother have a special place in the heart of God. Mothers face many heartaches in life, and one of them is letting go of her child. Few will be asked by God to let go of their children as early as Moses' mother did, but every mother will eventually have to let go. All they can do at that point is pray that God will guide and protect them. Mothers who follow the Lord's instruction in Proverbs 22, 6 can have confidence that they send their children into the world prepared to face life's trials. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And so, remember, look at the faith in the past. Look at the faith in the present. And then third, look at the result of faith. Look at verse 10. It says, And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. 
So she called his name Moses, saying, because I drew him out of the water. As a result of the faith of Moses' mother, of her trusting in the Lord, she had the joy of watching him grow up within the special circumstances God had planned for his life. Every mother who places her faith in the Lord will not get to watch her children grow up in a king's house, but every mother can trust the same God that Moses' mother trusted. And every mother can know that God's will for her child is just as important as God's will for Moses. Jochebed trusted God. She was faithful, and God used her faithfulness. She could not see the fruit of her prayers and her trust in God. Sometimes present circumstances make it hard to see into the future. Sometimes we get weary in well-doing. But she kept the faith, and God used her in his plan. She had the privilege of seeing her son blessed with material wealth, the best education in the world. And she saw her son get advantages that she could never provide. And yet, she saw him flee from Egypt. He killed an Egyptian while defending a Jew, and she saw him exiled. I'm sure that was a tough time for Jochebed. Yet, God was still at work. Sometimes, God uses the storms of life to clear the air, so to speak, to redirect us, to strengthen us, and to make us more dependent on the Lord. Another reward of Jochebed's faith was to see her son grow to maturity in the same kind of faith. She could not have known that he would become the leader that would lead the Israelites out of slavery. If, if children are raised in a home where prayers are said and the Bible is read, they will most likely live the same kind of life that they have seen modeled before them. If children are raised in a home where God is only a name to take in vain, they will most likely also follow the example set for them. How important is the example we set for our children? A child raised in an environment of profanity will likely speak the same way. Children of alcoholics often become alcoholics, and children raised in a home that has no place for God will likely have no place for him when they grow. There are many well-meaning parents that do not want to influence their children when it comes to religion. They want them to make up their own mind. What they fail to realize is that they are influencing them by not living for the Lord in front of them. It is their responsibility to teach them about God. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 23 and 24, in the great passage that we often know, uh, call the, the Hall of Faith. When you get down there to verses 23 and 24, it reads, by faith, Moses, the same child that was put in that, in that boat, in that ark, and became the son of Pharaoh's daughter, who grew up with all the privileges and then left, and then eventually came back to deliver Israel. When that young child grew up, it says, by faith, Moses when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. God has a plan for our lives. Let me 
ask it, do you have the faith of Moses' mother to be willing to let God do what he wants to with your children? Do you have the faith to be a godly influence with your grandchildren? Are you willing to let go of them and let God lead? Are you willing to follow him wherever he leads? Well, this is Mother's Day. And I would encourage you to honor mothers. To honor your mother. Whether your mother is alive or whether she's passed from this life. Honor your mother in some special way this day. And if you are a mother, will you give your children, however old they are now, give them to the Lord. Let them be under his care. Let him give the direction of their lives. Would you do that? Would you make that commitment? Certainly on this special day, would you honor your mother? Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the example of Moses, his mother, Jochebed, the mother that she was, the nurturing mother, the fearless mother who refused to obey the king's evil command. She raised her child to love you, to know of your ways. And Father, may we do the same. Thank you, Lord. And we just seek your blessing on all the mothers. All the mothers who are alive with us, those who have passed from this life. May we give them honor and may you bless their knowledge, their ministry, their commitment. We place all this before you in the name of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord bless you, and you have a wonderful day.